Now, if it wasn't for that goddamn bastard Sam Bankman Freed getting all the bond and all of the press in the world yesterday, I would have been talking about this stuff because, yes, this would have been breaking news then, but I had more interesting stuff to talk about realistically, okay? There's a whole bunch of money going on right now, and what, what the Uniparty is more concerned with is... It would normally be troubling, but let's keep it a buck, okay? They just want to make sure that their pockets are stuffed appropriately and that they look good doing it now. Isn't that more important than anything else? Because I, we're not going to go into this story all that much, okay? I just find it absolutely hilarious at this point because you got the New York elected officials, the state officials for the great state, well, the once great Empire State, okay? They voted to uh, gift themselves a just about 40% increase, uh, pay, pay increase. Meanwhile, what? Uh, they're going to be dealing with uh, an influx of migrants, thanks to Title 42 being completely donezo after the Christmas weekend. Oh, uh, sorry, 29% boost to their current $110,000 pay. How adorable. They made sure to pass that before Christmas break, but had nothing, nothing at all concerning uh, the rampant crime in New York, okay? migrant crisis that's manifesting up there as well trying to not look terrible oh given the fact that yes like it points out in the third paragraph right there a 29 percent boost to their current hundred ten thousand dollar pay will also result in wages more than three times higher than the median forty three thousand two hundred eight dollar earned wages of average new yorkers yep that's what happens when you get one party rule in a fucking state like that like democrats have super majorities in both houses in new york city and then probably have I can't necessarily say the worst governor, but she's definitely on the short list there. Kathy Hochul? Hochul? I don't know. I've got strong words for her, but I don't think it really needs that much of a thought. Okay, Democrats are always going to make sure that their pockets are stuffed and that their friends are well taken care of. And uh, Republicans will just go ahead and rationalize it as, oh, we'll be on our side of history. Because guess what? That Senate omnibus bill? Oh, it passed with nothing good coming out of it to be completely honest okay but hey man guess what you guys can feel real good about having two strong independent women standing behind the foreign leader holding up a flag that was signed by everybody in congress fucking backwards dude like holy shit you cannot get a more perfect encapsulation of the corruption in the deep state in 2022 than that shit right there, okay? A foreign dignitary's flag with all the virtue signaling in the world being held behind a beneficiary of the United States to the tune of $130 billion in less than one calendar fucking year. You can't make this shit up. Holy. But what's in this bill, okay? <laughs> like I said, nothing good, man. The $1.7 trillion dollar that's a, man, it just seems like trillions just fucking fall out of Congress at a record rate. But what's inflation, recession? The fuck are you talking about, man? A bill passed by a Senate vote of 68 to 29. There's allegedly 50 Republicans in the Senate right now. Allegedly. On Thursday afternoon, 18 Republicans voted for the 4,155 page bill just released days ago. How many of them do you think fucking read that shit? Mm, 4,155 pages, huh? But you guys know well enough because 42 billion to Ukraine. We have to stop Putin because Putin's a bad man, right? From start to finish, from top to bottom, the omnibus is bold, generous, far-reaching, and ambitious. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer doing what Chuck Schumer does, okay? Spend the money of everybody else outside of New York, because New York is a state exclusively for politicians at this point. Can we fucking agree to that? So I'm not mad at him at all, whatsoever. It's just the anemic opposition, okay, that was more than willing to sign on to this fucking nonsense, okay? It's not everything we would have wanted, of course, I don't know what you guys ended up losing on, to be completely honest, because any amendments that were pushed in the final hours ended up getting turfed off the side of it because Mitch McConnell, I don't want to look like I'm not supporting Ukraine. Fucking dick. When you're dealing in a bipartisan, a bi <laughs> yeah, bipartisan, huh? This, these are the type of Republicans the Democrats want, right? Inept, anemic, and non-confrontational. We're working in a bipartisan fashion. Ergo, we got everything that we wanted and fuck the opinions of the red states that are out there. Uh, but yes, uh, you're dealing in a bipartisan, bicam uh, bimac bleh, bicameral, my mistake, sorry, way. 
uh, you have to sit down and get it done, which means each side has to concede some things. Like what? Can you point to anything that you guys didn't get in this one? Okay. $1.7 trillion, 4,155-page bill includes $45 billion in aid for Ukraine, adding to the $66 billion taxpayer money lawmakers had already approved for Ukraine as a blank check and without any accounting for the funds spent. American taxpayers have given more aid to Ukraine in 2022 than Afghanistan, Israel, and Egypt combined in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great fantastic not like i'm you know super stoked about sending money over to any of those other places but at least in 2020 you know the united states was still in part responsible for afghanistan so the fact that you're just giving money to fight a proxy war like just fucking admit it dude at this point in time like just stop it in just a few short months since the ukrainian war began right at the end of february do i got my timeline right on this one yeah they've racked up 100 and yeah 30 billion dollars few republicans tried to stop the massive spending bill yes 29 of them negotiations became sticky wednesday after senator mike fucking lee that dude man there's a short list of really good republican politicians that are out there mike lee might be at the top of that because this dude is fucking strong. Yeah, but he put in a Title 42 amendment going directly against the wills of independent Kirsten Cinema. Oh yeah, b big funny on that one. She wanted to get rid of uh, any sort of uh, border constrictions that were out there. She's an independent though, guys, right? But yes, I threw a wrench into the Senate process. As a result, many critics to the deal were hopeful Congress would be forced to pass a short-term spending resolution to keep government open pending a continued standoff between the Democrats and Lee's amendment. But Schumer resolved the issue uh, with a prosecutorial tactic to circumvent the Lee amendment. Schumer worked with Senator Kirsten Sinema and John Tester. Is this the bipartisan effort that you were talking about? Oh, she's an independent. Bro, she still caucuses with you guys. What the fuck's the point? Okay. Uh, Thursday morning, by crafting a side-by-side -side amendment to provide political cover for 10 senators to ignore Lee's Title 42 amendment. There it is right there. Okay. Kirsten Cinema, right? Uh, she wants to do all of that good stuff. Okay. She became an independent so that she could be a better voice for the Arizonan people, right? And Arizonans are just notorious for their desire for open borders, right? Okay. Just remember when she's up for re-election in a couple of years time. Hopefully they get shit short or er, shit sorted out. Uh, or at least shortly. I'm not entirely sure of the trial schedule for Carrie Lake out there, but... Hopefully you guys should get, yeah, some shit figured out uh, for 2024 because holy what the fuck is going on there. Nobody's going to be happy about this in her home state, regardless of political affiliations. Now, the senators who back the alternative amendment uh, for political cover to Lee's amendment are notable. They include some senators who are up for 2024 re-election, such as Joe Fuckoff Mansion, Senator Sherrod Brown, Tester, and Cinema. Of course, remember, keep all of those notable figures right there. Turncoats, if you will. And John Tester, yeah, up in 2024, a Democrat in Montana. Bro, that shit ain't gonna fucking last for you. Schumer told reporters before the vote that the tactic would allow the spending bill to pass the Senate, enabling senators to go home before Christmas. Oh, as long as the politicians are taken care of. I'm, I'm so happy. They're they're figuring out how they're going to be spending all of your money, but at least they get to be go they get to go home before Christmas. That's so nice. It's it all of this was decided Thursday afternoon. They needed to get flued out in an appropriate amount of time, right? Uh, the bill will head for House approval. If all goes well, President Joe Biden will sign the bill into law in the coming days. I'd imagine that probably happens today. Haven't heard anything about it yet, but, you know, hey, if it's a license to change, I'll do an update either later today or, you know, it's obvious. It's going to get fucking approved, okay? All of the details got fucking hammered out right now. It's all but a fucking formality at this point. More Republicans like Dan Crenshaw and his buddies will just show up and be like, Oh, Ukraine all the way. Woo! But yo, man, uh, all of the pomp and circumstance of Zelensky going in front of the United States Congress to deliver the year-end fucking speech. Holy shit, dude. Did you not think of the optics on this one? If you didn't... Oh my god, the, 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 the worst attack on our democracy took place January 6, 2021. Who had the final say on the House floor in 2022? Oh, a leader of another foreign country. Oh, very interesting. It's fine when they do it, but when the other side does it, oh my God, it's literally attack. Interesting. But Russia, man, being based out there, 
Mox, the Hollywood style Zelensky DC trip, no calls for peace. Yeah, that was something else that was out there. Listen, you need to go ahead and you need to fund us more in our war effort. It's just, yeah, no talks about peace at all whatsoever. And I'm just hoping and praying that Russia is a little bit more patience under their sleeve or their coalition with Ukraine, or not, sorry, Ukraine. That would be, you know, something that should probably happen in some form or fashion very soon but no their little coalition with china and india right now working out that fucking new aspiring world power hopefully they just don't get tired of this fucking shit and start glassing motherfuckers because that might not be the uh that might not be very good for everybody just saying as much as uh, some big brains out there, I think that was uh, LA Times or New York Times or something like that, saying that a, a small-scale nuclear war might actually be good for the environment. I don't want to find out. Russia's government spokesman and diplomats responded scathingly to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's brief visit to Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, mocking it as Hollywood-style trip, very funny, and claiming it confirmed America's resolve to engage in a proxy war with Moscow. Yeah, man, I'm not funded by you. Uh, I'm not funded by Russia or anything like that. I can just, you know, see the writing on the wall like many other people out there can as well. As Zelensky arrived in D.C. as lawmakers mull over a year and oh, yeah, end of the year omnibus spending bill, which has already been passed. Forty five billion dollars will be going to Ukraine as a humanitarian effort and as uh, take as many nukes or take as many warheads as you want, because I don't think they're handing over nukes quite yet. Ukraine and Russia have been in war since at least 2014. On and off, it's been more hot than not recently, but in the grand scheme of things, yeah, going all the way back to Crimea, but they still haven't been able to figure and suss all that shit out, and I guess it's uh, easier to get while the getting's good. The Russian government had been aiding a separatist insurgency in the Donbass region since then as well and vocally condemning a popular uprising uh, that year that resulted in ouster of then president Viktor Yanukovych. Uh, Yanukovych. Okay, they, that's a little bit better. Kremlin, the Kremlin considers Zelensky an illegitimate Nazi leader. All right, because of... Uh, Yankukovych's departure, though Zelensky defeated Yankukovych's er, successor, Petro Poroshenko, in the 2019 presidential election. Yeah, yeah. And then it all just circles back around to what Uncle Joe was doing out there in Ukraine and maybe Hunter getting a board, uh, board seat at Burisma, a Ukraine company. Hmm, it all does come full circle and why somebody has an open fucking checkbook. Really gets the old noggin joggin now, doesn't it? Now, the war escalated in February. Do we need to go over this? It's like, yeah, we lived through 2022. We know, we know. We're still paying for all of it. Uh, Zelensky's visit to Washington to both thank Americans and ask for more money because, oh, this is good down payment, but we could use more. Uh, the West is set up for a long-term confrontation with Russia, Zakharov told reporters at a regular briefing. According to Russian news agency TASS, uh, no matter... Uh, how much the West tries to arm the neo-Nazi regime. Oh, the Azov Battalion, if you think that they're being hyperbolic. And just in case you thought that, that other picture was flipped or anything like that, there there we go. They still have the fucking flag backwards in that other perspective. These fucking dunce broads. Hollywood-style trip to Washington by the head of the Kiev regime has confirmed that the administration's conciliatory statements about the lack of intention to start a confrontation with Russia are just empty words. Sounds about right. What was essentially announced to applause and sarcastic smirks was the need to continue the proxy war against our country until a complete victory over us. Putin's top spokesman, uh, Dmitry Peskov, took a uh, less strident tone in addressing the visit uh, with reporters, choosing to focus on disparaging Ukraine rather than America. Yeah. For the time being, we can state with regret that neither President Biden nor President Zelensky have said anything that could be perceived as a potential readiness to listen to Russia's concerns. Yeah, man, if you're engaged in a war, uh, a war that uh, fewer and fewer people, people, like actual people, not these fucking plasticine weirdos, actually support as the days continue to go on, don't you think you should be doing good by your own constituency and meeting at the negotiation table? Because life inside um, Russia right now doesn't seem all that bad, but for where all the bombs are allegedly going off and people are just dying all the time in Ukraine... 
doesn't really seem like the leader cares all that much. He's just out there shaking hands, kissing babies, fucking old women, collecting Oscars, and also getting billions and billions of dollars to do as much. Doesn't really seem like he has the best intention of the Ukrainian people at heart, right? In his speech on Wednesday, Zelensky stated that he only present... Oh, that he had uh, his... Oh, he had presented his peace initiative to Biden, but did not discuss it in detail. Instead, he decided... Oh, he dedicated much of his time to thanking the American people and asking for more financial support. This fucking grifter, dude. We have artillery, yes. Thank you. Uh, we have it. Is it enough? Honestly, not really. Bro, you uh, you aren't even there, okay? You're barely fucking there. You're in your green room, okay, entertaining guests. Do you actually know what your soldiers need? Probably not. But then again, if you don't know a couple of things, you're probably sitting in the correct room because opposite to you is somebody who legitimately thinks it's fucking Easter this upcoming Sunday. So appropriate that he has a picture of FDR hanging over the mantle right there, okay? Yeah. Closest thing the United States ever got to a monarch, you know, four fucking terms, and then the last one he spent, you know, laid up in bed or in a fucking wheelchair. How appropriate, right? But instead of accounting for that omnibus bill or anything like that, okay? Because yes, the house is going to be very busy, of course, going through it. No, they aren't. They're just going to give it the old fucking rubber stamp and away everybody goes. So everybody can be home for Christmas, right? Because we need to make sure that our elected officials are properly taken care of, right? What else is the house doing? At least during the time that the Senate was mulling this shit over. Well, they were voting to release Donald Trump's tax returns. Who fucking cares? Really? Really, dude? Like, okay, he's a private citizen at this point in time. Sure, he's announced that he's going to be running for president in 2024. But did you just, like, dox a private citizen at this point in time? That seems a little bit fucked up, but what ultimately did they find in these ones? Well, um, Trump paid $1.1 million in taxes during his presidency. Yeah, um, his wealth ended up going down during the time that he was president, mostly because he deferred his salary, unlike Joe Biden, who, uh, oh yeah, he's taking all that shit, okay? And that's why, oh no, no American's gonna end up getting a tax bill. Uh, the, their taxes aren't gonna be going up if they're paid over $400,000 a year, man. How much money does the president make? 360000 Very fucking convenient on that one, huh? And yeah, during the time the president, or that uh, Trump was uh, the president, I know a boy can dream, right? All of his business dealings, the Trump Foundation was held in escrow, or it was being run by his son, Eric. So yeah, he had no business dealings. He had no say over that stuff. Legally, I'm sure he, you know, still gave guidance to him. You know, you can't regulate all of that shit, but everything that he did on the books was above board. And even releasing his taxes. Oh, we got him this time. He just paid a lot of fucking money, bro. Like, what are we doing here? Former President Donald Trump and his wife, former First Lady Melania Trump, paid a total of just oh, uh, just more than $1.1 million in federal income tax over the course of his presidency, according to an overview of Trump's tax returns released by the House Ways and Means Committee. While Trump's full tax returns haven't been released yet, the Democrat-controlled committee published a report, probably the most salacious side to this, because <laughs> they don't want to give him a fucking, you know, even shot at this stuff. They hate him. They hate him so much. Documents show that from 2015 through 2020, the, jo er, the Trumps jointly reported millions of dollars in income from each of the six years in capital gains, dividends, and interest. Yeah, because taxes for billionaires is very fucking complicated. So yes, there was depreciation, and given the fact that he has a lot of real estate holdings, there's going to be depreciation worked into there. Yes, capital gains by flipping, moving houses, okay. Stock investments paying off, like all of that shit as well. And yeah, interest. So yeah. There was this thing called passive income that he was benefiting from. Fucking wild. For most of the period in question, however, there was more oh, there was more than offset by losses, with the Trumps reporting negative income for four out of the six years. Yep. While the losses reduced Trump's tax obligations over the course of six years, their total federal tax liability was $4.4 million. After the appreciation of tax credits and excluding items such as self-employment taxes, this narrowed the net tax to of $1.8 million. The committee also voted along partisan lines to release all six years of Trump's tax returns, which were expected to be made public as soon as within several days. Might get them before Christmas, probably get them after Christmas, because everybody's just worrying about how much more money we can get out of the taxpayers. They'll, they'll refocus on Trump after the break. Uh, they'll be coming up. Might come out today, might come out tomorrow. I highly doubt it, though, but tomorrow, right, that would be maybe today, maybe today. 
But still, your average person isn't going to know what the fuck to do with these tax returns. All they're just going to do is take a look at the big numbers and say, Oh, Trump made that much money. I only paid that much money. That's far more complicated than my W-2 form. What the fuck? It's like, yeah, yeah. Motherfucker employs a lot of people. He has a lot of holdings. He has a lot of what normal people would call assets. He has other liabilities as well. You need to have degrees. You need to have master's degrees in fucking accounting in order to properly figure this shit out. But no, no, no. This is going to be catching Trump red-handed. It's like, who fucking cares, dude? The ultimate disclosure of the filing will cap Trump's month or multi-year battle to keep his returns private. You can't learn much from tax returns. It's illegal to release them if they are not yours. Yeah, man, this is um, the government releasing private information, okay, sensitive financial information of a private citizen. It's a little bit fucked. I would say that it's probably a violation of your First Amendment right in some form or fashion. The question of whether to release Trump's tax returns has uh, become a contentious issue with Republicans arguing that doing so would set a dangerous precedent. Yeah, of course. Representative K er, Kevin Brady, a top Republican on the House Ways and Means Committee who opposed the release of Trump's tax returns, argued that the information contained in such disclosure, disclosure sorry, could be spun by political foes. Yes, and um, media pundits. Oh, but then again, yeah, he would be redundant to say that. It is the power to embarrass, harass, and uh, or destroy Americans through disclosure of their tax returns. Yep. Nearly half a century, the political enemies list is back in Washington, D.C., and we worry with, oh, this will unleash a cycle of political retribution in Congress. Yep, because now you set the president, oh, okay, cool, just the president has to release their tax returns. Yeah, but what about else, what about anybody else running for office? Hmm? How long before a contentious Senate race? Oh, you have business holdings overseas. The American people should be made, uh, should be made aware of these dealings. And then you start working down to what? All of a sudden, you know, in order to be employed at the fucking post office, you have to start releasing your tax returns. To what end? To what end? It started out as a fucking publicity stunt to begin with. And now it's just morphed into, well, nobody deserves privacy anymore. All under the justification that the orange man is like really bad guys. But remember guys, Slava Ukraine, yeah, and they could use your support more now than ever, especially during these trying times, okay? Um, what was it? Over the weekend or something like that? Make sure that you turn out your lights, turn off your Christmas lights for all of those Ukrainian people that are without energy to turn on their holiday lights. Solidarity, brothers. Most of the motherfuckers who uh, just blindly post uh, hashtag support Ukraine don't even realize that Ukrainian Christmas isn't until fucking midway through January, you dumb fuckers. But... Hey man, just blindly support this fucking nonsense and hopefully, man, you do you you do your part, okay? You go pick up a rifle and you go over there and defend this fucking corrupt regime. Or hell, just stick around long enough so that you can defend this corrupt regime. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.